It's time for another episode of The Sean Tappet Show, a podcast where I connect you with thought leaders from across the globe, digging into some of my favorite topics like personal development, marketing, spirituality, and pretty much any other shiny object that happens to catch my attention. Today, my special guest is Gina Golston, and we're going to be talking about her brand new book, Dreams of Awakening, Prayers and Prophetic Dreams, Announcing the Coming Move of God. Gina, it is truly an honor. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Sean. It's great to be here. Well, my pleasure to get to know you, get to chat with you as well. However, I know you're going to be brand new to much of my audience, so I'd like to kick this off by having you share a bit of the Gina Golston origin story. So for somebody meeting you for the very first seminar talk today, what are a few things they need to know about you? Well, I grew up in Pentecostal church. Um, I have sought the Lord most all of my life. I became a Christian when I was 14 years old. Um, I've always pursued God. I've never been perfect. None of us are. But um, I've always had a heart for God and the things of the Lord. I knew at a young age that the Lord had a calling for my life. And I began to pursue Him. And in pursuing Him, I think a lot of times we stumble into a lot of the calling that God has for us. And so I started dreaming when I was a young uh, lady, just a young child, actually. And I didn't think much of it. I thought everybody dreamed like I dream. But uh, I began to see that God was using that um, probably uh, in 2003. God began to turn that. So that became a big part of my life. I've served in missions around the world, uh, various missions, things, lived on the mission field for a while. So it's been a growing process, um, the Lord just bringing me uh, to where I am today. And I think it's all just been part of the development of learning to trust God, walk with the Lord, pursue Him. And the biggest part of me is I love Him and I'm after Him, after His glory, and I'm pursuing Him with all my heart. And I'd love to pull a little bit more on the thread of uh, those early dreams. You know, it's it's very common in terms of some of the prophetic and kind of seer guests that I've had on through the years where a lot of those things would start showing up there in their life when they were little. And so I'm curious in terms of content of those dreams or those early dreams, what do those look like? Um, and, and when did you really start to have a context that it was actually God speaking to you through those dreams? I'm always curious how things get got started. Yeah, I started dreaming when I was a little girl. Um, I would, you know, dream typical dreams. And then as I began to get older, um, my dreams were very detailed. And I began to notice that I'm a detailed person, so I pick up on details. Um, And so that began to develop more. Um, Having gone, you know, grown up going to church my whole life, a lot of my dreams had to do with uh, church things, God things. Um, and I started having people that would come into my life that would help me to realize this is more than just, um, you know, dreaming a dream. This, I think dreams are actually even uh, a form of the prophetic and a, a work of Holy Spirit to reveal. We see that all through scripture. So I think it really, uh, it was developing all along the way. I don't remember any particular dreams that I had when I was a little girl, but I remember people beginning to tell me when I would share the dreams, these are more than just dreams. And so I began to pray and it, God, if this is something you're using and this is something that you want to develop in my life, then help me to know, give me wisdom with that. And In 2003, I began to have uh, my first dreams about America. That was when that very first dream came to me in 2003. I shared that in my first book. And um, then in 2018, I had the dream uh, about America shall be saved. And it was from that dream that I got connected with Dutch Sheets. And Dutch and Cece have been so kind to me. And Dutch has really. Uh, helped me and those that I'm connected with through that stream have really encouraged me to um, lean into that and allow Holy Spirit to take these dreams, you know, and even giving direction, strategy for prayer, um, prayer assignments, even that some people are gaining from these things. 
So it's just been a lifetime development. Um, and as I said to you before, I do more than dream, but I think this is a big part of uh, what God is doing in and through my life right now. So I'm very, very thankful for that. And I definitely want to get to the book, but I have to pull on one more thread. Sure. Uh, I'm curious about your your call into missions work. Um, why did you end? Why and how did you end up on the mission field? Uh, where did God send you? Uh, that that's a path not everybody's willing to go down. So I'm curious how you ended up on the mission field. Yeah, um, it actually came through um, reading a, several books <laughs> and the Lord. And then we had a missionary that came to our church. Uh, this was in my late teenage years. Um, and the Lord just really began to draw me in that direction. Then he connected me with a couple who were living uh, and uh, the directors of a school in Central America. And uh, it was just a supernatural story. We probably don't have time for all that, but it was a supernatural story of how God just connected me with those people. And I wound up moving there for some time and living there on the mission field, teaching in a school. And then from there, the Lord connected me with a group called Men and Women of Action out of Cleveland, Tennessee. And with them, we traveled short-term missions. Um, and they're a wonderful group of people. And we um, traveled all over the world to do missions work. And that was my life's passion. And I loved it. I loved it. I still do. And when God allows me, I still am involved in some mission projects. But um, it was my passion. And then it was probably in 2014 that God just really began to turn me uh, more toward the ministry aspect, toward the church. And um, so, but yeah, that was a big, big part of who I was for many, many years. Yeah. Well, thanks for uh, all the left and right turns as we kind of rounded out your origin story. Uh, but I always feel like that's so important because if we don't understand uh, how somebody came up, their influences, their experiences, I feel like that always helps me and it helps the audience know why, why we should listen to you, why you are the person to have written the book that you've written. So uh, thank you for entertaining all of my questions and helping us to get to know you better. Uh, let's jump into some of the the dreams from the book in terms of uh, kind of the the dream as the dreams, maybe the dream or dreams that started the momentum for this project or uh, when you first started having those dreams for America, what did those look like? How did you process them? Uh, were those different from a lot of the dreams that you had in the past? Because obviously this is a, a significant message. Uh, I'd love to hear how that got started. Yeah, the first dream that I had that really launched me is the dream that I had uh, about where I heard the angel make an announcement from uh, the Capitol building of the United States that America shall be saved. Um, that in that dream, the angel, I saw the angel come out of uh, the doors of the Trump Hotel where I knew that Dutch Sheets was hosting a meeting called the Turnaround Conference. Um, that meeting literally took place uh, two weeks after I had the dream. And um, it was at in the dream, I knew it was at the end of that conference, uh, which was a prayer gathering, making an appeal to heaven for America. And so I knew the angel was coming from that meeting, that prayer gathering, with uh, a verdict from God. It was God's answer to that appeal. And he took that verdict in the form of a scroll to the United States Capitol building. And he there released the announcement of God's verdict, which is America shall be saved. Um, that dream got into the hands of Dutch Sheets and Dutch uh, literally read it at the very end of that conference two weeks later. and. I think that's where God really began to help me to understand that this was going to be a big part of my involvement, my part of his plan for America. And so the dreams from that time, since I've been connected with Dutch and this team, uh, those dreams have more intensified. Um, and I think it's because of the timing of God. And that's actually how I got connected to Larry Sheet, uh, Larry Sheet, Larry Sparks. Um, 
is through he heard Dutch telling some of my dreams. And, and in one of the dreams uh, was the phrase, it's time. And that really stuck with Larry. And so he and I connected. And that's how the book came about. Actually, he really encouraged me that um, these dreams needed to be told and uh, on a broader scale. And so that began the project for the book. Well, I like that Larry Sheets and we, we love Dutch and yeah, Tim. So yeah. I'm, I'm sure Larry <laughs> would feel honored to be a, a uh, an honorary member uh, of the Sheets family there. I, I love that. Maybe, maybe there was something prophetic in that, uh, that, that those few Could words be. that you just spoke. Be. Um, in terms of kind of, uh, you know, whether we want to say that the prophetic timeline that we're in, um, you know, as you kind of move forward from those, those early dreams and as you process and, and obviously you share more of that in the book, like, how do you come to, how did you come to see, how did you come to understand, uh, where America is in, in God's timeline? Cause you know, people have a, a variety of opinions around, around this, but I'm curious for you with these dreams, like what did God show you for where America is? Is, is it doom and gloom? Is it hopeful? Uh, I would love to have you just share a little bit of that with us as well. I think the um, the biggest impact that God had on me and as far as revelation for where we're headed for America, of course, the America shall be saved dream. It was um, it really was telling to us that God's plan for America. There will be bumps in the road and we know that. And there's a lot of things that need to be dealt with and corrected in this nation. But I think the prayer movement has really served uh, as a catalyst to help turn this nation toward what God is doing. And what I believe God is doing is bringing us to the prophesied awakening, to an awareness of God that will bring transformation in this nation. And I had a few dreams that uh, began to really clarify that for me. Um, and it was in these dreams, I had several dreams where God began to uh, connect some of the past moves of God uh, together. And God began to use this word culmination with me. And it's like those things that we read and study about how God moved Azusa Street, uh, the Welsh revival, the Hebrides revival, these things and how God, even the Red River Meeting House, which is right here near where I live, and how um, God launched the move of his spirit in those times through p- people who devoted their lives to him through prayer, through prophetic decrees. And it developed, it brought forth awakening that changed the nation at the, in those times. And so God began to use these dreams to really help me understand and others to really get the understanding that what we're moving toward in America right now is not a destructive path, but I think it's a redemptive path that is going to bring us back into alignment with God's original plans and intentions. And it's not that God's taking us back to how it was. But it's that he's showing us through what has been that he's not done. And what he has done, he'll do that again and even greater. So it's not that we're trying to recreate what God has done. He's not trying to take us back to how it was, but he's bringing us to what should be according to his plans and his intentions. And so by these dreams, I think God is giving clarity to myself and even to many in the body of Christ. And again, it's not that I'm anything great. We all take our place and every part matters. We all have something to contribute to the plan of God. And so through these dreams, I think prophetically, what God is saying specifically to the church is that as we draw near to him, he draws near to us and God will be seen. And when God is seen, then it provokes awakening to an awareness of God. And I think that's what prophetically what we're moving toward is that awakening to an awareness of God that's going to bring transformation, spiritual transformation in our nation. One of the things that's been a huge encouragement to me, and you haven't, you didn't see this in our uh, spirit empowered circles uh, historically as much, uh, just the, the focus on kind of a multi generational vision that we're 
helping to build an, an inheritance for future generations. I saw that more uh, in like the kind of the reformed homeschooling circles uh, that I was a part of, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, but now I see kind of a, a vision for a multi-generational inheritance popping up all over the place in terms of prophetic and apostolic leaders that I talk to. Um, you know, I, I'd love to have you just press into that a little bit. Um, how and why are we to be about and just in the midst of what we're doing, building an inheritance for the future generations. That That's strong. I see that theme everywhere right now. Mm. Well, I, one thing that the Lord taught me several years ago is that we are a connecting point between what was and what will be. And so what we show and do in our time while we are here, it is leaving a pattern for those that are going to come after us. And what they know about God is going to be ter- be determined by what we show and how we live for God and what we experience with God. Our experiences with God, um, they're awesome for us here. But I think that is huge to understand that it's not just about our times, but we are literally um, leaving an example for those that will come after us. And how far advanced they are spiritually is going to be determined by what we leave them with here. So it's so important, I think, for us to pursue God, to take our place in the plan of God. Um, I often say that we take our place in the timeline of God, the plan of God, and we do our part. And so that's not just contributing to our time, but it's contributing to the generations that are yet to unfold. And so they need to see the power of God. They need to see, uh, not just hear our words, but they need to see. We don't want to leave them with just memories of what God used to do. We need to leave them the baton so that they are already running with what God is doing so that they can step into what God is about to unfold for them and through them in their time on the timeline. So that's huge. Indeed, indeed. And, and we're, we're definitely in a season where I feel like God is calling his church, his bride into a season of ref- reformation, uh, a, a pursuit of refinement and holiness. And I, I feel like there's an increase of fear of the Lord. Like there's all these things where we're, we're being called to press in and and go closer to God than we've ever gone before. Uh, and I I feel like we're in even some of the shifts that we're seeing across the world and across the nation right now, I feel like we're starting to see the waves of the results of the intercession and things that are happening, starting to have tangible effects all around us right now. Uh, but in terms of, <laughs> we want to call them milestones or markers, as, as we continue to have this shift where we're turning back to the Lord and we're pressing in and going deep, um, what are the things that we should be expectant of? I mean, I, I think it's obvious that there will be an increase of signs, wonders, and miracles, just as we are more about hosting God's presence and going after what he's given, uh, giving us to go after. But, um, you know, I'd love for you to speak to that. And and just in terms of when we see these things happening, we know that it's furthering, it's it's continuing. What might that look like? Well, I think right now the drawing um back to the Lord, I see that really happening in the church, is that we're coming back to that awareness that we need God. You know, we've made it to be a whole lot of things. And so um, the Lord spoke to me a couple of years ago, and I woke up one morning with this phrase, the great return. And he said, he began to talk to me of how the church, that we got to come back to him And as we come back to him, again, we draw near to him. He draws near to us. When God is present, his power begins to be realized and seen. The greatness of who he is begins to be seen. And so in terms of how we move with that and what we expect with that, I think we keep our focus on the Lord and we just keep moving, uh, praying in the spirit believing the word, keeping our ear to what God is saying, allowing Holy Spirit to um, deposit in us what is on the mind of God, which is what Paul said he will do. So we make much of praying in the spirit. We continue just to press forward and believe God. 
that's a big, big thing right now is we have to believe God. There's so much um, noise in the world that is going on and so many things that are uh, vying to disrupt our faith in God. But I think as we stay in prayer and we stay in that place of praying in the spirit, staying focused on God, believing what he said. I mean, that's it. Just keeping that first and foremost in our thought life. Yes, we're in this world, but we are not of this world. We're of the kingdom of our God. We're representation of the kingdom of God. So we have to stay focused on God. Um, I think worship is huge for us, personal worship, corporate worship. It's huge to keep us focused on God, keep us centered on that. Prayer is huge. Prayer will never not be a part of what we are to do because that's how we hear. Uh, The Lord spoke to me and said, my presence is your command center. So it is out of that place of staying in the presence of God that we're going to know what to do and how to do. And we just walk in obedience to the Lord, that simple childlike faith in God, and just continue to move. And so then we see God move. And as we're moving with Holy Spirit, He teaches us what to do as we progress with Him and move forward, always bringing glory to God, always. And Gina, if you had to sum it up, whether we're talking about the things we've covered in this interview today, or somebody picks up the book, they read it all the way through and get to that last page. What, what's what's that that core message, that call to action, that takeaway, uh, that that spark that you hope every single person takes away from this message? I think the greatest thing that I hope people see is you matter. What you do for God, it matters. It's not just about the platform preachers. It's not just about the people who write books or have a YouTube channel. Every person in the body of Christ, you have a supply, and it matters whether or not you do what God has put in you to do. And as we all do that, we will see the body of Christ, as Paul said, built up to become that habitation for God, which is what we want in our nation, is for God to be seen. And so I hope when people read the book, that they will see it not just as Gina's story. They will see it as their story. They will see it that God has purpose for you as a part of the body of Christ. Your supply matters. And so as we all do our part and just believe what God said, I think the dreams can give you strategy. I think uh, the dreams can give you prayer strategy. They can. Uh, there are many people, as I've said, that have gotten prayer assignments by reading the book. And that's so encouraging to me. And I hear from people often that said, you know, I never knew I could do anything. You know, I never understood what that meant. So I pray, that is my sincere prayer, that their takeaway is you matter and what you do matters. And even beyond that, what you don't do will matter to the generations that are coming after us. So I pray we all just take our place. We believe God. We will see the prophesied awakening that God has given. And we can all, we can all be a part of that. And as we take our place, we will see that happen. That's how it's going to happen. That's how God is going to save America is through an awakened body who are doing their part with the intentions of God for their life for the kingdom of God, for the sake of the kingdom, for the sake of the nation to be saved. Gina, I love that. That's such an encouraging and empowering uh, call to action, a way to wrap up the conversation. Uh, So many of my prophetic friends the last few months have been talking about, as we look to what's unfolding yet in 2022 and beyond, uh, be in the lookout for God to move with men and women that you've never heard of, men and women you haven't seen on TV, you haven't seen on stages, but they've been at work. They've been in their prayer closets. They've been pressing in. They've actually been about the Lord's work and they've just not been telling you about it. And so just really be on the lookout for really big moves of God happening amongst people you've never heard of. I feel like uh, the phrase for this season is 
small is the new big. It may it may look like a small thing, but it's actually part of a massive move uh, of what God is doing right now. Gina, in terms of the listeners, the viewers connecting with you, finding out more about your ministry, uh, getting their very own copy of your new book, where do we discover you on the web? Uh, you can check out my website. It is Gina Golston Ministries. Dot O-R-G. Uh, you can also connect with me on Facebook and um, you can order the book right there through my website. And like we do with every episode, we'll make it easy. We'll have links in the show notes to Gina's website, links to places where you can buy uh, the book as well. So we make it easy. You click on through, it'll be right there. It's time to bring this episode of the Sean Tabbitt show to a close. Many thanks for being a part of my conversation with Gina Golston. Once again, our book today was Dreams of Awakening, Prayers and Prophetic Dreams, Announcing the Coming Move of God. And Gina, I want to say thank you so much for sharing with us today. It's been an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you, Sean. It's been an honor to be here.